Hey everyone, welcome to New Frame Plus, a series about the animation in video games. Alas, it is impossible for me to make a video about every game with great animation that gets released in any given year. There's so many, and they come out so fast. But all that great animation does still deserve to be celebrated, and that is what we're going to do today. Here is a list of 2020 games that had some wonderful animation in them. And actually, before we even get to that, 2019's video had one glaring omission that needs correcting immediately. Because less than a week after I uploaded that video, I was introduced to Later Alligator. And I immediately regretted the fact that I had not seen it just a week sooner because this game absolutely belonged in that video. Later Alligator is a point-and-click mystery comedy thing animated by Small Boo Studios, who you might recognize as the duo behind Batman Piderman. And they have knocked this out of the park. I adore every single one of the alligators in this video game. The dialogue is already great, but that comedy is amplified by these delightful animation loops happening behind each speech bubble. Heck, a lot of the animations made me laugh without dialogue. The animation style is simple in exactly the right way. It's got charm, it's got a style all of its own, and if you want a game that's gonna make you smile, I can't recommend it enough. But now that I have corrected that oversight, let's move on to the animation of 2020, starting with Crash Bandicoot 4. It's becoming clear to me that I have not been paying enough attention to Toys for Bob. Like, I never got into Skylanders, but the appeal of the character animation in those games would always catch my eye. Their 2018 remake of the Spyro trilogy cranked that character appeal up even higher, and now, from what I'm seeing in Crash 4, I'm beginning to realize this studio might have one of the best animation teams in the business. It is too rare to see cartoony animation like this in 3D games, and almost never executed this well. Look at some of the wild stuff they're doing. I I'm framing through this. Look at that. That is some exceptional cartoon right there. These characters are a blast to watch, in-game just as much as in the story scenes. But look at the great overlap on those arms, or the snappy spacing on this run, or just the expressiveness on this bandicoot. Phenomenal work, y'all. Shame on me for sleeping on this studio's work. I will not be making that mistake again. But as long as we're talking about revivals of PS1 classics, let's go ahead and talk about Final Fantasy VII Remake. I have talked about it before, but the original Final Fantasy VII had some legitimately great story scenes, and the thing I looked forward to most with this remake, even more than seeing this gorgeous combat system in action, was the chance to see those old story scenes brought to life with modern animation technology. The original game did such a wonderful job of staging scenes with these simple character models, using broad pantomime gestures to communicate emotion. Subtlety was not an option for them, but they made it work. But now, subtlety is back on the table, which is great because there is so much potential in these scenes for more robust character performances and nuanced acting choices. So many opportunities for meaningful glances, or those tiny shifts in expression that communicate exactly what a character is thinking. And to my delight, this remake frequently nails it, fleshing those old scenes out with acting detail while still managing to preserve some of the original game's broad body language in a way that makes all of these overhauled characters still feel familiar. It's honestly kind of amazing. What's more, and this surprises me most of all, this remake really gets these characters. It understands the original social dynamic between them better than any other Final Fantasy VII spin-off or film I've seen. Whatever bonkers thing Square's team clearly has planned for this remake story, I can't wait to see more of it. But now let's talk about Animal Crossing. Now, I realize that compared to all of the expensive-looking detail we were just looking at a few seconds ago, Animal Crossing's animation might seem somewhat unimpressive. And I will grant you, it is much less detailed, much less technically complex than the animation you're gonna see in most AAA games today, but that simplicity is more of an achievement than it might seem on the surface. There are a lot of games out there that showcase a simple, cutesy style of character movement that do not pull it off nearly this well. No, Animal Crossing's simplified appeal is meticulously crafted. It's like a Sanrio character. There is a precision to this simplicity that is way harder to nail than you might think, and it's pretty wonderful. 
Nintendo's animation teams are just so consistently good at what they do that any given first-party Nintendo game having this level of polish and appeal just feels like a given. But achieving that level of polish always takes a lot of iteration and hard work, and every one of those successes is worth applauding. Now, every passing year brings us a fresh crop of AAA titles with high-fidelity, naturalistic character animation rendered in-engine. This year alone, you've got Marvel's Avengers, Ghost of Tsushima, Resident Evil 3 Remake, Star Wars Squadrons, Half-Life Alex, just tons of impressive work by hundreds upon hundreds of very skilled people. But when it comes to naturalistic character animation being rendered in real time, no game has raised the bar quite like The Last of Us Part II. The character animation on display here is kind of intimidating, to be honest. Every one of these scenes is well-directed, well-performed, and just polished to a mirror shine. And that character animation quality doesn't stop at cinematics. Even during regular gameplay, there is an astonishing attention to characterizing detail and a number of robust technical animation systems in the mix, driving contextual details as subtle as open or closed mouth character breathing. It's incredible to behold, and it only gets more impressive the more the devs explain what's happening under the hood. A huge congratulations to everybody responsible for bringing these characters to life. All of the animators, tech animators, animation engineers, mocap directors, and of course, the performers. This game is a real feat of technical craft, and I'm sure it's not the last time y'all are gonna raise the bar on us. And while we're here, actually, a quick word to the leadership at Naughty Dog, and all the other crunch factories in this industry. Maybe see about creating some more sustainable working conditions for all of these incredible people. You've got access to some of the best artistic and engineering talent in the world, and they can keep making top-tier games for you without sacrificing their own well-being. Just stop putting humans through wood chippers to create your video games, please. Anyway. Next, I would like to talk about The Pathless. I love how well the animation in this works. The entire game feels reminiscent of Fumito Ueda's work with Ico and Shadow of the Colossus, but the animation especially feels like it captures that spirit of focused minimalism. The hunter has a very limited number of actions — run, jump, shoot arrows, and occasionally team up with the bird friend. But that handful of actions look great and feel even better. Gracefully speeding through these fields and chaining shots together without losing momentum feels so cool. And what few story scenes there are manage to convey a lot of emotion and connection almost entirely without dialogue. Just pure expression and body language. I love it. Sometimes your game's animation just has to get a few things very right to succeed with flying colors, and I think the animation in The Pathless absolutely does. But in other news, Arc System Works done did it again. The wizardry this studio keeps performing with these faux 2D fighters never stops impressing me. First Guilty Gear Xard, then Dragon Ball Fighters, now Grand Blue Fantasy Versus, and Guilty Gear Strive on the Horizon? It's ridiculous. I already made a video about the techniques that Arc System Works uses to make these 3D character models look and move like hand-drawn sprites, and I highly recommend checking that video out if you haven't, because this team is repeatedly performing one of the most impressive animation magic tricks in gaming right now. No game studio in the world makes the anime style look good in 3D like this team does. They're only getting better at it, and they are clearly not planning to give the rest of us a chance to catch up. And speaking of gorgeous 3D character animation with a 2D look, let's talk about Ori. The first Ori game was already a beautiful little animation showcase, and the sequel looks even better. Ori's movement is somehow even more fluid and with zero loss in control responsiveness. And the animation in the story scenes is still wonderfully expressive. How can you not instantly fall in love with this bunch of creatures? And I don't talk about environment animation much here, but they've pushed that even further too. This painted forest feels so dense and alive, I love it. The animation in the Ori games succeeds on every front, and I don't know how the crew at Moon Studios is going to top themselves after this, but that's what I thought last time, so, um, beautiful work, y'all. Keep it up. <laughs>
Anyway, Streets of Rage is back. What a way to make a comeback after 25 years away, right? Like, I barely played Streets of Rage back in the day, and even I feel nostalgic watching this. I love how this game looks. The folks at Lizard Cube, Guard Crush, and .emu may have shifted this sequel away from the pixel animation of its forebears, but thanks to a classic approach to timing and posing, the hand-drawn look feels like a natural evolution of the pixel animation that came before, rather than a deviation from it. And boy, I cannot get enough of that dynamic rim lighting effect the character art has as you walk past different light sources. It's so cool. A lot of love clearly went into the creation of this long-awaited revival, and I'm just so happy for all of the fans of the originals who get to enjoy this after such a long wait. Next up, Paper Mario, The Origami King. I know Nintendo has done this flattened look with the Paper Mario series many times at this point, but I still love it. Especially now that they can render the paper craft materials so meticulously. Like, the ultra-simplistic animations on these characters have always been cute, the way they sharply pop between poses as if they're being animated in stop motion, or the way they turn around just by flipping 180 degrees. But having all of those simple animations projected on increasingly realistic paper that sways and flaps as it moves just delights me. The animated execution on this cute little idea just keeps getting pushed a little further, and I don't know if I'm ever gonna stop being charmed by it. Earlier this year, I made a video about the animation in the Phoenix Wright games, and about all the ways the creators of those games have managed to do so much using so little. A lot of visual novels have to use creative applications of limited animation to present their character interactions on a small budget, and this year I was particularly impressed by the way Necrobarista handles this challenge. Because Necrobarista has some of the least animation I've seen in a 3D visual novel, and yet, the folks at Route 59 managed to actually make that one of the game's visual strengths. In a certain sense, Necrobarista is extremely cinematic for a visual novel. The camera is frequently cutting to new angles in these 3D sets throughout every scene, framing every moment for maximum impact. But within each of those individual shots, the characters will usually hold on a single bespoke pose and expression. The result ends up feeling kind of like panels in a 3D graphic novel, and it really works. In fact, I would say this stylistic approach ends up looking better than a lot of 3D visual novels that feature more actual animation. A smart application of less can often be way more effective than a compromised attempt at more, and I think Necrobarista is a perfect demonstration of that. Boy, there was a lot of good game animation in 2020. Let's talk about Spider-Man! I don't think any of us are surprised that the animation in this game is great, but it is though. Insomniac's team sure knows how to animate Spider-Mans. I love how even though you're still controlling somebody in a Spider-Man costume, and the game pretty much handles exactly like the original, Miles' movement still looks noticeably different from Peter's. I already loved the original's web-swinging animations, but I think I like Miles's even more. The combat animation still flows beautifully, and those finishing moves look even cooler than before. The animated action in general is just something to behold. You will be hard-pressed to find another game with action set pieces this stylishly choreographed and animated. And the fact that, on top of all that, they even went to the trouble of making the Into the Spider-Verse suit animate right, and added a custom finisher for the cat? Now that's just showing off. But while we are on the subject of well-animated video game cats, there is one more game I want to talk about today, and that is Spiritfarer. Thunder Lotus games have thoroughly outdone themselves. The hand-drawn animation in this game is just wonderful throughout. There's quite a lot of gorgeous detail and stylized, flowing physicality to Stella's basic locomotion, more than I'm used to seeing in a lot of 2D game characters. Every character in this game is a delight to watch, but my absolute favorite is your cat companion Daffodil. The animation on this cat is perfect. I will never get tired of this idle animation of Daffodil playing with the obble. But even better than that, when you play this game co-op, and you should, Player 2 assumes control of Daffodil, and Daffodil has his own animation for just about every single interaction in the game. Farming, weaving, mining, hugging, 
Name an activity Stella can do, and the cat can probably do its own adorable version of it, and it's probably my favorite game animation thing out of this entire year. This cozy management game is beautiful in just about every way it possibly can be. I adored it, and I'm very excited to learn what else Thunder Lotus is capable of. But I think that'll do it. Well, at least assuming I haven't missed anything. Which I probably have. I can't play every game. I've tried, and it didn't work. And I still haven't gotten hold of a PS5, so maybe Demon Souls should be on this list for all I know. But if it turns out that you know of a 2020 game with spectacular animation in it, which I have failed to mention, please do post it in the comments. Because if there is some good game animation to be seen, I want to know about it. Also, apologies for the lack of new videos in recent months. I have been working on a very large one. But it's nearly done, and I won't spoil what it's about, but it rhymes with Schmonic the Bledgehog. If you happen to be as excited to see that as I am to just finally finish it, be sure to click that subscribe button, or consider supporting the show more directly like all of these wonderful folks here. Thank you for watching, and I will see you again soon.